readiness. Uh, a wonderful atmosphere is building up there in the stadium. Let's now cross to Uruguay. We hope you're going to enjoy this match. It's the Socceroos and Uruguay to see who will qualify for the World Cup next year. Now let's join Paul Wade and Paul Williams. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Montevideo, the last stop in what will prove to be another emotional World Cup qualifying journey. Well, at the start of another week, the Socceroos are aiming to send you all off to work and school with a winning feeling, with emotions not felt for 28 years, the last time Australia qualified for the World Cup. The task is achievable. The team are ready. But can they retain the calm and confident demeanour in the cauldron of the Centenario? And the cauldron is starting to erupt as well as the players are just beginning to make their way out onto the pitch. The various substitutes for both teams have come out. The crowd are awaiting the starting 11s, as we all are. Paul Wade, all of a sudden, it has absolutely taken off here. Well, I think they might have been falling as they were uh, reasonably subdued about five minutes ago, but they they see the FIFA Fair Play banner come out and all of a sudden the tune cha changes a little bit and they're jumping up and down in the stands as one, as you expect from South American supporters. And the roar when these two teams hit the park, well, I hope you can feel it at home because we can feel it shaking the window in front of us here. There's light blue all around the stadium as the refereeing team from the United Arab Emirates makes their way out. It's a big day for them as well, don't forget. Carlo Montero, the captain of Uruguay. And there's the roar of the Centenario. Incredible scenes. The fireworks have come out. The paper has been thrown in the air. And Montero and Carini and Recoba and the many other great talents in this Uruguayan 11 have been lifted enormously. And here come the Australian team. Harry Kuehl last out as he was in Melbourne. It's a huge moment for these players. Paul Wade, Buenos Aires in 1993. It's a similar experience. You were there just try and capture if you can how those boys are feeling well i just hope that they can take all the atmosphere in and do the job because there's so many nerves building it up inside them there's so many things going through their mind about the atmosphere about how warm it might be in the sun about the opposition their job what's frank farina told them you don't really have time to enjoy it until about 15 minutes from the end and you're four nil up but I hope it's a lot earlier than that because they'll never, ever forget a moment like this. If we're four up with 15 minutes to go, enjoyment would be an incredible understatement, I'm sure. Red Everton, number seven. A young man with a big future and a chance to carve out a name for himself on the world stage, which I'm sure he'd enjoy. The huge flag on the far side has been unfurled as the Australian anthem comes to the fore. Well, a considerable amount of conflict with the Australian anthem from the crowd. No surprise in that. But now the Uruguayan anthem will get a different reception, I'm sure.
Get ready for action. World Cup football is coming your way. This is the 778th World Cup qualifier and the final World Cup qualifier in the campaign for the 2002 World Cup in France, or rather in Japan and Korea. It was France four years ago. Frank Farina has been solid under enormous pressure this week. Let's hope his team can be the same. Conditions here at the Centenario. The pitch is very spongy, but it's a little bumpy as well. The ball will certainly hold up and make it a, a slower game than we saw at the MCG. Well, let's check on Frank Farina's 11, and there's no change for the third game running. Paul Ocon scared us all when he fell and didn't complete training last night. He's fine and holds together a midfield that is industrious as well as creative. Brett Everton on the right believes he'll have more room to operate today. His speed plus Harry Kuehl's pace and poise the key to the counter-attacking strengths of the team. Paul Agostino, perhaps the unlucky one to miss out. His coach has said that he will play some part at some stage in the game. What you want, Viva or this? There's a strong police presence here at the Centenario. Around 800 of them, in fact. But Uruguay made this very late change to the team that was named yesterday. Surprisingly, uh, Gonzalo de los Santos has been left out with Washington Thais reinstated in a move intended to increase attacking options. The hitman, Dario Silva, has a real question mark about his shoulder injury, but he is risked in such a crucial match today. Uh, Mario Reguero also comes into the team. He's been added to the left-hand side of midfield with uh, Gigu switching sides to the right flank. Well, tickets for this match were sold out in double quick time. You could buy a ticket for the game for just $8 if we're prepared to go into the unseated areas behind the goal. Frank Farina, it's the biggest match of his life. It's the biggest match of all of these players' lives. Pop Tony Popovich in the centre there, desperately unlucky not to be included today. The training that the team has done further aggravated his foot injury. I bumped into him in the lift this morning and he was bitterly disappointed but he said he doesn't mind provided we qualify on a go to the show in Japan and Korea there is the man in control of the game Ali Busaim from the United Arab Emirates well let's get crystal clear on the scenario any Australian win and the Socceroos qualify for the World Cup a draw is enough to qualify a one-goal defeat, provided Australia score a goal, is also enough. A defeat by two or more goals, and Uruguay will claim the final World Cup berth. And if at the end of 90 minutes it's 1-0 to Uruguay, we're on for extra time and penalties. So there's lots of possibilities that the early attack from Uruguay has fizzed out. And taking the crowd out of the game is a phrase we hear in modern football these days, Paul Wade, and that is a lot easier said than done at this place. Oh, there's no doubt about that. All they've got to do is put the ball in the back of the net and we'll see the silence we saw during the national anthem. It's quite eerie to see 65,000 people not saying a word. Emerton continues his run forward as Kuehl retrieves the ball in the corner. Musket. Emerton, Musket, it's a promising build-up in the early minutes, Vaduka, Emerton! Well, that's one way to take the crowd out of the game and put the ball in the back of the net and Emerton there with an opportunity. What a good move that was. Musket into the chest of Vaduka and the shot was way off target. But the move had a lot of promise about it considering the nerves in this early stage will still well and truly be apparent to all of the players. To back three for Uruguay again with Lembo, Montero and Rodriguez. Four in midfield. And this is Dario Silva. Away by Murphy. Dario Silva was said to have dislocated his collarbone. And there's no way he would have been fit 
according to normal medical possibilities, but somehow he's made his way onto the park. That's a terrific try as well. And Dario Rodriguez getting forward from the back. Very sweetly hit indeed. A lot of the Uruguayan journalists looked at the starting 11 and said they have never seen such an offensive or such an attacking looking Uruguayan lineup. They're a team that's very much been built on a strong defense, scoring few goals in the process, just 19 goals and 19 qualifiers so far. A little ball in behind is a good one. The ball holding up in the lush surface here, a musket got back quickly to stop the danger. And that's Mario Roguero, who's a very much attack-minded midfielder, very fast, very skillful, but not too sharp defensively, apparently, which may give Emerton some room to move. As we see, Rakova takes the corner, Ocon clears it. This is Garcia. Rakova, on that left foot of his, he just drills it over. Kuehl got to the ball first. Paduka lost possession under a challenge from Garcia. This Garcia again, very much involved today, where he largely had a quiet game in Melbourne. Interesting ball to the back post, but there's no one there. Victor Pua, the coach of Uruguay, only took over the coaching job 10 games into the campaign when Daniel Passarella decided to quit. He's been coach of the national team before. So Lazzarini is on the left. He cuts inside. And down under the challenge. Viduka tried to help it on. Montero. That's a nice ball as Lazzarini gets goal side once again. More at the right place. There were players running through. It's a different attacking formation for Uruguay today as well. They have two out and out strikers in Magallanes and Silva. There's Rakova in behind them. And also, Ruggiero pushing up a long way as well. So, at times, they've got four up front. Which, again, as I've mentioned once or twice before, may leave some room for Emerton. Well, it is a psychological battle out wide, isn't it? And uh, Thais is one of those players that if he forces, if he forces Stan Lazaridis to go the other way, it'll be very difficult to build up to attacks out wide. Well, an early opportunity for the referee to assert his authority on the game, giving a decision against the home side. A decision that uh, it would have been pretty tempting to give to Uruguay. Paduka. Paduka waiting for some options. It comes in the end from Musket in a deep position. Emerton. Ran into trouble in the shape of three blue shirts and here come Uruguay the speed on the counter-attack one of their most potent weapons three men on the left is Ruggiero Australia stretched just for the moment he took it down well Musket got there and did well not to concede the corner solid defending from Kevin Musket gets a slap on the shoulder from Sean Murphy speaking of shoulders Paul Wade we haven't seen a challenge on Dario Silva's dodgy shoulder yet that, that's got to be coming up any moment now well I think that selection is a panic movement they need somebody out there who can score goals and psychologically if they see somebody like Silva they just might believe that they can do it Gerda, who's already got involved in this game he came on in Melbourne as a substitute with about 12 minutes to go and didn't have enough time to really have an impact Montero. There he is again. And a good start to the match. That's an awkward ball for Schwarzer. 
Well, he pulled it down well. It was definitely going in the goal unintentionally, but... Duca trying to hold the ball up. Kuehl chasing hard. Certainly in the opening stages, Harry Kuehl has lined up alongside Mark Viduka, level with Mark Viduka, as Silva and Moore. Well, Dario Silva stopped there. The referee shrugged his shoulder as if to say, well, I didn't blow the whistle, and Silva can't believe that because he was in a pretty good opportunity there. Ocon's in one here now, and that's a nice ball out wide if it can be kept in, which it can't. Standing up for most of the game so far. It's a pretty good start by Australia, really, without having done too much in attack. Just the one chance by Emerton. It's a wayward ball from Ocon. How quickly Uruguay get players forward. Darius Silva was impeded there. The referee didn't see it. The crowd did. Silva was held back off the ball. That's a couple of decisions that hasn't gone his way in the opening stages. Not tall by any stretch, Dario Silva. Viduka fouls his man. Garcia wants to get on with the game quickly. Kuehl's just questioning what went on after the whistle went. And the referee saying, I'm in control. Well, it's important with these early flashpoints that the referee does take control. too much of Rakova so far that could change that's a good challenge and away by Musket Kuehl's free on the right hand side the ball didn't quite reach him you can see the intentions of Australia though as soon as they win the ball it's played as quickly as it can be right up to the likes of Kuehl and Viduka Dario Silva back heel from him Uruguay looking sharp here's Silva again oh important challenge there by Craig Moore man of the match in many people's eyes in Melbourne well, Mark Schwartz said a couple of days ago he expects to be much busier today than he was in Melbourne it's a corner to Uruguay they've got numbers in the box that's a good ball in and Schwartz Kept his eye on it as he had to do. Great punch by him. Still Uruguay in control as they come forward again. That's another awkward one. Well, it's nil-nil at the centenario. Where's home to Australia's largest car exporter? And the 20,000 people who contribute to every Toyota built in Australia. It's Victoria, of course. The home of Toyota. an interesting comment from Paul Ocon uh, about Alvaro Rakoba. He said that Rakoba wanted to come off in the second half in Melbourne just because he was feeling tired, but the coaching staff wouldn't let him. They forced him to stay on. As Viduka holds the ball up and fouls his man. And it was a lunge from Mark Viduka. Nothing too sinister in it. That's Pablo Garcia. And down under the challenge. That's a long ball. That's an interesting ball as well. Magallanes couldn't keep it in. He got a little nudge there. Might have been tempted to go to ground. Well, that's what they do, isn't it? They scored a goal against Argentina with a ball over the top. We've seen it a number of times early in this game. One over the top with runners going left, right and centre. The Cobra's not being picked up at the moment. I don't think Skoko and Ocon have realised that he's playing in the hole just in behind them and nobody seems to be picking him up. Well, the flag's up for some reason. The referee's just seen it now. And the decision has gone to Uruguay. I'm not quite sure what that was for. 
Just a tug on the jersey was the hand signal from the assistant. The two assistants and the fourth official are also from the Emirates. A lot of space to move into there for Alembo. Again, that little ball over the top, we've seen a lot of it already in the opening nine or ten minutes. There's no doubt with that very long grass and that very spongy pitch that it just holds up nicely for the pace of Uruguayans. It's a corner for a Cobra to take it, trying to whip one into that front post. And that's hit the post! Well, the ball's still in play. The whistle hasn't gone. And in the end, it's a goal kick. But that's the danger of Alvaro Rocoba. So difficult for the player on the post to know what to do there. It was Josip Skoka rebounded to one of the Uruguayans in an attacking position in Lembo, but what could easily have killed in the goal. Kuehl might feel that he could have got a decision there with that push in the back. Kuehl comes to the ball. There's no one behind him. Uruguay looking in control at the back anyway. It all looks very rushed, doesn't it? When the Socceroos get the ball, it, it's almost as if they feel they have to get up the other end to relieve the pressure. Well, this is pressure. One-on-one. -on -one. Silva on Murphy! Dario Silva back in the team, back in the scoring groove as well. Exactly what the Socceroos did not want to concede an early goal. Murphy left exposed at the back in a one on one situation. And Silva, this small, extremely quick man against Murphy, who's tall and not quite as fleet of foot. He was caught out there, he was left exposed, and Uruguay have a goal. And when you play a flat back four, and Uruguay have two wide men, it sort of draws your two wide defenders out wide to cover them, and leaves the Socceroos down the middle one-on-one, -on -one. and he did ever so well to shield that ball. You can see he's keeping his distance, and Murphy can't get close. It was a great finish in the end. Well, Murphy resisted the temptation to lunge in and possibly give away a penalty. Uruguay, one. Australia, nil. Mario Silva celebrates. crowd has found even more of their voice. It's a free kick inside the Australian half. Silver brought down. Victor Pua is right at the edge of his technical area. Graham Arnold and Frank Farina just leaning against the Australian bench. Socceroos just feeling a little bit subdued at the moment as the free kick comes in its way over the bar. I should just remind you at this point that the aim really for Australia in this game is to score one goal. That means that Uruguay must find three in there to beat the Socceroos on aggregate. So there is plenty of time in the game for Australia to find that goal. To concede a second would just psychologically be a real blow. Nazaridis. And there, the forward move. Kuehl! Tipped out by the goalkeeper. Well, Graham Arnold hugging his head and it's in the area. Now Australia have a corner as they respond to the Uruguay goal and the Duca protecting the ball but the cross from Lazaridis was a beauty Kuehl met it wonderfully no one near him it was going in and that is a top-class save 
by Fabian Carini. Well, how Australia wanted an equaliser quickly, and they almost got it. Lazzarini's to take the corner. Moore and Murphy are both up. The corner's been taken. The referee's just asked play to hold up for the moment. There's a bit of argy-bargy going on on the goal line there as Viduka is taller the, than the goalkeeper. He's taller than Montero as marker. And he's just trying to block the goalkeeper's view on the goal line. And not surprisingly, the, de the defenders are trying to intervene. And that's what's going on. Look at that. Back post, free header. Here's Skoko coming in. Well, it's a Uruguayan free kick, yet there's an Australian down on the ground. Well, the last couple of minutes have uh, just shown how nervous they are, the Uruguayans, when the ball is coming into that 18-yard box. On the TV this morning, they actually said that if we have any concerns, and they were showing replays from the MCG, if we have any concerns, it's when that ball is delivered anywhere between the six-yard box and the penalty spot, and Carini cannot get it. It's an interesting-looking ball for Magallanes, and that's very well defended by Kevin Musket. And an early throw from Schwarzer to Emerton. He's quickly surrounded by a couple of players, and Musket with a hasty clearance is given away. Ocon wins it back. Still haven't really settled down the Australian team. Kuehl perhaps the man for that job with a little ball over the top for Lazaridis to stretch his legs. Lazaridis is into the area. And he's won a corner. Another moment in the game that will lift the Socceroos. Moore and Murphy forward. Moore very much emerging as a real threat from corners. Deep ball, but it's way too deep. The ball's actually already gone out. So they said it was a risk to bring back Dario Silva. They said he wasn't quite 100% fit. Well, that was a very sharp finish indeed. That's his sixth goal in the qualifiers. He's Uruguay's leading goal scorer. And you've just had a glimpse of why that is so. Great finish. Here come Uruguay again. And that's clever play. Uh, so hard to get the ball off. Makova looking for Silva. Well, clash of heads there. Two players down, Silva and Vidmar. Silva bounces back up quickly, but Rakova was quite brilliant there, the way he kept the ball going past several Australians. Uruguay one, Australia nil. Getting the right phone on the right plan is a snap at Phone Zone. Simply click, call, or come in. More mobile, less confusion, guaranteed. One three two one four one. Phone Zone. Oh, there was concern for Paul Ocon when he went down very heavily in training last night. He was punching the ground afterwards as well in that manner that a player does when he knows it's something serious. But it's Tony Vidmar who's the injury concern now. And Schwarzer is having a bit to say to the referee. He's trying to calm him down. Meanwhile, the medical team of Australia is talking and seeing to Tony Vidmar, who's off the park at the moment. Silva. That's a good ball back. And Udo and Magallanes got to the front post to win the header. Oh, well, just while Tony Vidmar was getting treated, it was Paul Agostino who was the player warming up. Not too often in the matches so far. He's been very tightly marked. He felt that in the game at Melbourne that Gigu, his marker, really stuck to him like glue. 
hoping for more opportunities today. Garcia trying to find Rakoba. He did well to just glance it out wide. This time off the chest. Is Rakoba in the mood? It's quite surprising, Paul. We all felt Alvaro Rakoba was looking pretty good in Melbourne. But uh, come back to Uruguay, they felt he was disappointing and it was another poor performance from him. Yeah, they were pretty harsh in the media on all of their players. They go to Europe and they play well, taxi drivers used to tell us. But they come back here and they, well, they are just not half the players they used to be. So there was a lot of doubts in the crowd. But uh, so far, they've put on a great show. So the signal from the referee means wait for the whistle. It's quite a long way out. Harry Kuehl stepping over the ball. Lazaridis has been the man from that kind of range and that kind of position in the past. Maduka is also just checking on what's going on. He now leaves it. Skoko's there. Muskets there as well. Kuehl likely to be the man who kills it! Not far away at all from Harry Kuehl. Just dipping over the crossbar. He hasn't scored a lot of free kicks in his career to date, but the type of player he is, he's tailor-made for that type of dipping free kick in the same fashion that Rakoba is on the opposite side. That's one by Murphy. Dario Silva, that's a little layback. It's a real gem from him. The flag's down. This is Raguna across. It's off the line. Unbelievable save there by the Australians who remonstrate with the assistant for not putting his flag up for offside. But how did that one stay out? Victor Pua doesn't know. We don't know here. But it looked for all money to be a second Uruguayan goal. Corner to Uruguay. Rakoba leaves this one to hang in the area instead. And that was well won by Musket. And it was always felt that there would be periods of this game where Australia would have their backs to the wall and would just need to resort to desperation in defence and we saw it there as Rakoba takes the corner. There's a loose ball on the edge of the area. Some Australians just waiting to get a toe in to stop it. Rakoba, deep ball. Dario Silva at the back post, a great jump for a small player. And that will be a goal kick. Well, so far, Paul, it's Uruguay's game. Certainly is. Look, uh, there are a few problems with the Socceroos. Stan Lazaridis is doing two jobs in front of, and how this stayed out. Let's have a look at this. It was Tony Vidmar, and it looks like Murphy who's cleaned it off the line. The back of Tony Vidmar's heel. But there are a few problems. Stan Lazaridis is doing two jobs wide on that left-hand side. He's trying to uh, help Paul Ocon out and Skoko in the middle. And he's doing the job that Tony Vidmar is doing as well. And Tony Vidmar has just got to start communicating him in some way. Just let him know so he can push on. And Murphy content to just play it into touch and not try anything too fancy at the back. And the roar went up from the Uruguayans as they sensed a little bit of nervousness at the back and Magallana whips one over musket away loose ball just look at who's forward there Dario Rodriguez is one of the central defenders that's how offensively Uruguay are approaching this game there was a school of thought that felt that because they had to go out and win the match that it would be just a little too unfamiliar for them tactically but and have taken to it like a duck to water. And another mistake, another loose ball. Moore wins it back. Lazaridis with not too many options going forward in Australia. Lose the ball again. Good 
Plenty of time left in the match, remember. Skoko. That's a great ball to Kuehl. Lazaridis. Still going Lazaridis, taking a couple on. This third defender out there. It's gone behind for a goal kick, but they certainly get cover on very quickly. And that's the job that Tony Vidmar can encourage Stan to do. And it means that Tony Vidmar has almost got to push up on the wide player of Uruguay. If he doesn't do that, then Stan has never got any confidence to push forward and get himself in behind the defence. Murphy, Moore missed it. And caught Magallanes in the process. Magallanes has been told to get up and get on with the game. Meanwhile, Australia play on. There's a player down, and Vidmar plays it out. But it was not a challenge that was really going to hurt Magallanes. Certainly was a foul that wasn't given, though. We will concede that. Uruguay 1, Australia 0. You've lost more of them. Hair loss is enough to make you wake in fright. But now, you don't need to lose any more hair. Hey, man, you need a hair check. Call Advanced Hair Studio now and book in for your free hair check. Call 1-800-800-500 now. So the ball returned to Australia, and Tony Vidmar will take the throw on the far side. Duke is still trying to get more involved in the action. Montero. No way for him to go forward, so he goes all the way back to Carini. Carini certainly looked a very competent goalkeeper in Melbourne. Oh, that's surely a foul by Dario Silva. Australia trained behind closed doors a couple of days ago. And Frank Farina had a wry grin on his face, knowing that really nothing is a secret when you're in this part of the world. There was a cameraman noticed on a, another building, just a block or so away, filming everything that the Australians were doing at training. So he knows tactically there is no surprises that he could spring here today. Garcia just clattered into Josip Skoko. He's gone down for the second time in this first half. The draw for the 2002 World Cup will be made in just five days' time. Will Australia be one of the balls in the bowl? Or will it be Uruguay? Can only be one or the other. Yeah, I don't want to preempt anything, but Tony Vidmar is doing a lot of stretching of his hamstring on the far side. He's been closely watched by Frank Farina. That's the Uruguayan bench, Frank Farina. And Graham Arnold there, the assistant coach to his left. Farina out of the Team that was beaten by an own goal in Argentina eight years ago. Dugu with something to say to his team as well. Tony Vidmar with a slight hobble about him as Skoko is taken off. A little golf cart coming on to the surface here. Australia for the moment anyway, the man down. Alright, we are going over to see what the problem is. No one warming up for Australia, which is just a little bit surprising. Perhaps that's a sign that they feel hey. Skoko will come back. But that's a foul. A clear one too by Musket on Reguero. And Kevin Musket's given a yellow card. 
to go with the one he received in Melbourne. That puts him on a shorter leash for the rest of the game. Aguero is uh, such a fast opponent. He's a real handful for Kevin Musket. Scorer for Australia in the first leg. How they need a scorer in the second leg at the moment as the free kick comes in. Rakoba, good ball. Desperate clearance there. It was Musket who cleared it. The ball's gone out. It's a Uruguayan throw. Rakoba turning away. Oh, that was so clever by Rakoba. But Skoko sticking to the task there and oh, what a nightmare he would be to play against he's just got no idea what he's going to do next well he's doing a, a very simple job very well he's not pushing himself onto the front line so that the likes of craig moore and murphy can mark him and he's not going to stand with Paul Ocon on Josip Skoko in the midfield he just sits in between the two and nobody in the end picks him up Silva again tangling with Murphy there was an arm grabbing there somewhere this time Musket wins it in the air Emerton hasn't had too much joy out of his marker on the right hand side and that's a corner for Uruguay again as they increase the pressure they pass the half hour mark here at the centenario Cobra to take it. Oh, gone out to close Rakoba down. That's not such a good ball, but it's found Dario Silva. As Aridis hesitated, and that will go through to Schwarzer. And Uruguay have only won one of their last six matches. They've drawn three and lost two as well. They did lose one game at home in the World Cup qualifiers. That was to Paraguay very early on in the campaign as Montero went into the back of Harry Kuehl. Both went down. Kuehl got up quicker. And straight away, Harry takes over from the dead ball situation. The comment from just a day or so ago as the players have been very much confined to the hotel it's a boring lifestyle nowhere near the glamorous lifestyle that you would imagine they're stuck in their hotel room Kuehl said he just wants to get on with the job of qualifying for the World Cup and get on home to see his family as he takes the free kick the ball stays forward Emerton wins it in the air away by Ruggiero he's got put about coming to meet Silva but he's just holds his ground, Magallanes is onside. Tony Vidmar, well Magallanes tugged him back there. Well, if he did get a knock, Tony Vidmar, he certainly didn't show it when he sprinted that 40 yards. And he came across all the way from the left to just cover the ball as it went over for a goal kick. Sure, he would have got the free kick anyway had it not trickled over. Skoko. Oh, that's a nice little ball. Skoko again. Lazaridis. Here's Baduka. Still going Baduka. Not too many room on the edge of the area there. Emerton closed down quickly. It's hard to find any gaps in this Uruguayan defence, which has been so tight so far. Murphy again. Silva beating him to the ball. It's a brilliant pullback. Big chance. What a save from Schwarzer. The Socceroos are hanging on here at the Centenario, and that will be a free kick for Australia. And that may be a save that Australia will look back on as being vital, but the pace of Silva against Murphy is a one-sided battle. He pulled it back beautifully. It was Maggie Yarnes coming in. Look at the time for him here. Schwarzer 
spread himself wonderfully. Well, you always look at goal scorers as the ones who take you to the World Cup, but uh, if the Socceroos do go, we might look back on this moment and thank Mark Schwarzer. It's not, uh, it's not as if he hasn't done it before. I think he sent them the Socceroos through on another occasion when he saved penalties against Canada at the Sydney Football Stadium, and he just might have done it again. Fuel. That's an early ball for Emerton that won't find it. It's an Australian team that's still searching for its rhythm. There's around 65,000 fans in the centenario but what you can't see at home is that behind each goal is a huge area for fans to stand and wave and cheer and in front of those fans there's a, a huge fence as well it's about eight meters high to stop them climbing over but if they do manage to climb over that in front of the fence there's a moat that they must also negotiate if they do want to get on the pitch so Security, as I mentioned, has been first class for Australia since the initial incident at the airport. Moore will win the ball and keep the ball here. And he plays a nice ball as well to kill. Montero. That's calm play from him. That's great play by Paolo Montero. Skoko can't get to the ball. Magallanes skips inside. That's well won by Moore who's been drawn a long way from the back four to follow Magallanes. Now he drifts back into position. But Aguero couldn't control it. Hamilton, Murphy, an early ball to feet secure, but he couldn't get there. Certainly possession, a vital commodity for Australia as Ocon just tries to calm things down with a lovely ball and that's another nice touch from Skoko to find Lazaridis in space Australia have got some numbers forward here Kewell helping it on the flags up but for a moment there it looked like Viduka was onside he hasn't had a sniff at goal really in the two and a half internationals he's played for Australia in the last two weeks very few opportunities all he needs is one and you feel certain that the ball will end up in the back of the net and that's a foul and the data is down and out outside the ground the referees I don't think he's particularly impressed with Ruggiero under this challenge musket tugging on him Certainly the challenge wouldn't have hurt him too much. And maybe he just copped a, a knee in the head as he was falling to the ground. He just had his shirt tugged by Kevin Musket. It's a tough one for Musket, Paul, because he's got a very tricky opponent there. He's got lots of pace. And Musket's already on a yellow. Yeah, he's, uh, he's trying to mark silver when he comes over to this left-hand side of Uruguay and then he's obviously got Re Rodrigo who's obviously doing some hard work too. Makoba with the cross again Australia looking good and the high balls are played into the area and they're looking good here as Vidmar breaks he's only got Harry Kewell in front of him this is Tony Vidmar leading the charge it's a ball that Everton will reach but Dario Silva's back with him Everton not in much room but he wins the corner I don't think Brett Everton has ever had less space to work with as he has done against this team. It's a tough test. Another facet of football as Everton completes this incredibly steep learning curve that he's on. Lazaridis, Reguero wants to come back on as Lazaridis takes the corner. It's a loose ball, but it's 
Just trickled away for a goal kick. Uruguay one. Australia nil. For two characters, life is about to change forever. Oh, my God. Over two brilliant hours, the year's final has an ending you won't see coming. Ah, shut up! David E. Kelly's Boston Public tonight. Guerrero sporting the bandage that required after the challenge by Musket. And that's a solid challenge from Kevin Musket. Clean as you like as well. There's some blood going over the forehead of Reguero. The referee's not too keen on that. He's saying you must get it covered up. You can't have any loose blood like that. So Reguero will have to go off, confirming that when he did fall, there was uh, some contact somewhere. So Rekoba will take the corner. That was run by Ocon. There's a loose ball on the edge of the area, but that's way into the fans behind the goal. I wonder if we'll ever see that ball again. A lot of blood coming out of the wound in the side of the head. We're closing in on half time with about three to go. Kuehl gets past one into the area. Still going Kuehl to play at the back post. Big chance, Australia! Well blocked, the shot there by Viduka. He struck it very sweetly indeed, but it went straight into a defender. But Kuehl once again, the man to make things happen for the Socceroos. Well, Skoko down under another challenge. He's had a pretty tough time of it in this first half. Giannis came in and just a clattering of knees more than anything else, but it can be a very painful thing, as you can see. Nothing delicious in the challenge from Magiannis. As Ruggiero hopes that the patch-up job is done. Frank Farina waiting and shot there. A couple of minutes to go before half-time. Well, there's no need to panic, Paul, I don't think. I mean, they've only scored one goal. They're still in the picture. All we've got to do is bag another one. And Harry Kuehl and even Stan Lazaridis has shown down that left-hand side that there are gaps. The unfortunate thing is that uh, they don't do it often enough. Uh, and I still believe that the problem is with Stan Lazaridis and Tony Vidmar just not communicating, one not covering for the other. Stan should not be coming that far back. It just gives Thais... The, uh, the incentive, the, the uh, mental strength now to go forward, really, and not have Stan Lazaridis drag him up the other end. It's a high ball aim for Murphy. Instead, it found Emerton, but Murphy decided to stay forward and just try and keep it going, but it's run out for a goal kick. Skoko is trying to get the referee's attention on the far side to come back onto the ground. Still waiting, now he gets the signal. Look at the space for Dario Silva. Here's Silva again, little layoff is a good one. Now Emerton, Uruguay have committed players forward, but quickly they come back. Emerton skips past a couple, that was lovely. A little ball on to Kuehl was just under hit a fraction. That's gone out. The first time Emerton really has created had to create the space for himself as he got past a couple of players very nicely. So someone's got to provide the ball for a football match to take place, and that's a rare occurrence, especially in a match such as this. Alvaro Recoba went to retrieve the ball and act as ball boy for an Australian free kick. That's unbelievable sportsmanship. taking any chances with the pace of some of the players. He goes back, oh, that's well done. He read it very early then, Craig Moore, and is immediately into full gallop to get there first. Been some problems for the centre of the Australian defence with the speed at the front of the Uruguayans. 
And Aguero with time to turn and time to run at Muscat and the ball's gone out. Muscat is going to win the ball anyway, but it's an Australian throw. Kewell, still going Kewell. Carini with a little bit of work to do with that save. He hasn't had much work at all in this first half. That's a long ball. That will be easy for Moore. getting the better of one there for Australia as we move into time added on there wasn't too much of that and it's half time here at the Centenario things are very much not going to script for Frank Farina and the Socceroos as they will go in a goal down some great moments for Australia in the first half was the save off the line by Sean Murphy as well as a marvellous bit of goalkeeping work from Mark Schwarzer to frustrate Magallanes, but it's been Uruguay's half well and truly though only got the one goal to show for it though Dario Silva very much looking the part with the reputation that he came into this game with and at the break at the centenario it's Uruguay one Australia nil and that goal scored by Dario Silva and I would have to say Craig and Charlie if Dario Silva did a collarbone last week I'm Diego Maradona. Yeah, there must be some super shots that they've put into it <laughs> over there in Uruguay. I don't know what the yeah, knock's right. like, but he's done a hell of a job. Well. His movement's been something uh, outstanding. But it's a very, very different looking Uruguay side than the one we saw at the MCG. And it's a different tie to what it was 45 yeah. minutes ago, isn't it? Now it's yeah. a true World Cup qualifying tie away from home, backs to the wall stuff. And, uh, you know, we said prior to the game and all, all during the week, let's just not concede in the first 15 or 20 minutes. And unfortunately, we've, we've done it once again. And now, Charlie, the pressure's right on the Socceroos because quite simply the equation's pretty uh, easy. We have to score. Most certainly. And I think... Uh what we've got to try to do is get it in the first five to ten minutes of that second half. We can't afford to try to wait as the game goes on. Um, it's just disappointing. I think we were talking about the defensive tactics and there we saw, you know, the Socceroos getting square and you can't afford to be like that. And, you know, Murphy being there with Silva, you just can't do that. The guy just gets past him and, um, you know, we've got to be very careful and very cautious on how we deal with that. He's a class act, isn't he, Dario Silva? He has scored the only goal so far. It's Uruguay 1, the Socceroos nil. Reminder about our MasterCard competition. That has now closed and we'll be announcing our winner at full time. But we'll take a break, then come back with some of the highlights from the first half. footballers all over the world, but I don't understand them here. Like, why leave Australia to play in this? Why do they play so much golf? He's up here every night practicing. Why do you want to play here? And tell me again, what do you call your manager? The boss, chief. Governor. Boss. Gaffe. Sir. Speed cameras are now flashless in the daytime. The cars are all makes and models. And they're in more locations more often. The only way to avoid being caught is to keep within the speed limits. Wipe off five or wipe out lives. Hey. 
back him again, train like him, play like him, beat him. Who will be the new commentary team captain when Richie retires? Does Tone deserve to wear the bone? Has Bill earned the right to wear the white? All will be revealed on the 12th man's brand new album, The Final Dig, out Monday. with unbeatable deals across the Toyota range. Right now, it's your greatest ever chance to save on new Toyotas, demonstrators, and used cars. Right here, right like Camry Intrigue with $3,100 worth of free extras, including alloy wheels, six-speaker CD, stereo, and ABS brakes. It's Toyota's greatest ever clearance. Right here, right now, the Great Summer Ideas Guide will treat all of your senses. A tropical garden paradise. Escape the heat in your garden. Food with exotic flavours. Wait until you taste this. The hottest summer escapes. Right at your doorstep. And a summer paradise for sale. This is going to be one tough auction. You'll survive summer in style. And your pet will too. With our brand new two-hour special. Great Summer Ideas, Tuesday. Socceroos down a goal at half time. They must score in the second half to have any chance of qualifying for the World Cup. That draw, incidentally, coming out in five days' time. But right now, let's have a look, courtesy of MasterCard, of some of the highlights of the first half. Yeah, this is very, very early in the game, Ian. We started the game extremely well, and uh, Kevin Musket got forward early. It was a shot for Brett Emerton. Uh, he'd be disappointed with it, the finish that he's put on it. But, gee, we did start well in the first five. Here's the Uruguayans going forward. I thought their intensity early on was quite good. And then Rodriguez, who a fullback, smacked it just over the bar with a nice dip. Of course, Rakoba in the first half was outstanding, and uh, that was came from a corner. Incredibly, uh, o uh, Skoko had it covered, but it did hit the post and come back inside. And here we're coming up to the goal, a long ball, a one-on-one -on -one situation into the defence, and Silva just turns beautifully and snaps it in. Yeah, we're defending deep there, Charlie, aren't we? You'll know as a defender, uh, Murphy's gone away from the goal uh, instead of stepping in front of him, and he'll be disappointed with himself, uh, Sean, here a little bit to, to let Silva get the strike in, but Silva in the first half has been the standout player. Mm. He's really been the difference for Uruguay, and it was a lovely finish. He certainly was. And here's the other end, Lazaridis, getting forward. And on the few occasions, magnificent cross. And Harry Kill, what a great header from that range and a fantastic save by the keeper. Yeah, Harry had a free kick outside the box. It's one of the few times we do. I think we only had two around that range in the first half. And uh, Harry, he, he, he threatened the goal. Mm -hmm. This year, Aguayan's coming forward again. Potential offside, a bit of a question mark. And doesn't Murphy do a magnificent job? I don't know how he scooped that. Over the bar, right at the end there. Oliveira, just, we've got to be careful about these offside traps as well. Trying to, you know, push forward. I think in these situations, you can't afford to do that. It wasn't long after that. Again, it's that man, Silva. His uh, pace is incredible, and it was a wonderful save by Schwarzer coming out, uh, using his body and spreading himself there at the feet of Magianis. It was uh, fairly late on into the half, and, uh, you know, had they have scored that one, yeah. then, uh, you know, we really would be looking in trouble. Let's have a look at the stats uh, at half time. And I guess uh, the telling one is the total shots, 13 to 4, Craig, in favour of Uruguay. Well, we sat here last Tuesday, Sandy, and we looked at those statistics, and you could put them, turn them around the other way. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Australia had all the shots, we had all the possession. We knew it was going to be different, but, you know, that first 45 minutes, yeah. it, uh, they read the script. I don't think we did. Mm -hmm. Paul Wade and Paul Williams over there calling the action in Uruguay. And I've got to say, Wadey, uh, if we thought that Uruguay might tire or be jet-lagged, they certainly don't look like doing that at the moment. No, they certainly don't, Andy. Uh, Sandy, it's one of those unfortunate situations where you know that there is something going wrong, but as a player, you just can't put your finger on it. Things are happening so quickly that uh, you can only actually look at it from up here and go, yes, that's the problem. 
Uh, the Americans have been speaking about, let's have three quarters, and I'm sure Frank Farina would have loved a three-quarter time and a quarter time as well as a half time, just to sort of get things, slow it down, and I'm sure you would uh, probably agree with that, Paul. There's a lot to do for Frank Farina at half time. This is where coaches uh, really earn their money. I think what you will see is Paul Agostino coming in, involved in the second half at some stage. Dario Silva's caused real problems for Australia with his pace through the middle. Perhaps if Craig Moore can be the man to pick him up more often than Murphy, that might uh, be a bit more advantageous for Australia as well. Wadey, we're, we're seeing the highlights here, and uh, it just seems we can't get out of our half. Ocon and Skoko are having difficulties in the middle of the park. I think, as you mentioned during the coverage, Rakoba is uh, really floating free around behind them. We really need the midfield more into the game in the second half, don't we? Well, look, tell you what, Craig, their heads are spinning, and it's only because they are outnumbered in the middle of the park. We've got two fullbacks who are sitting there and they're covering a space, but they're not doing anything. We've got two wide midfielders in Brett Emerton and Stan Lazaridis dropping back and almost playing the same position. Now, those two wide midfielders have got to push up and make the Uruguayan midfielders or wide players do a defensive job. Let's take a chance, force the issue in this second half and make the likes of Kevin Musket and uh, um, Vidmar do their job. You've got to force that issue. If you don't, Paul Ocon and Skoko will just be absolutely torn apart in the middle of the park. Wadey, you were talking about the, uh, the defence and Tony Vidmar having to push forward and so on. Do you see that the Socceroos seem to be very vulnerable right in the middle there with uh, Silva one-on-one on one with Murphy? Um, I think it'd probably be a good tactic if Moore started uh, marketing him a little bit more. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Look, there's got to... When you're playing a back four, you really have to push players across. You can't mark one player and one player only because there are times when you are going to be dragged from one side of the ground to the other. So the key not necessarily is to get more marking silver, but making sure that the communication happens. If they do that, if they push the, the Tony Vidmars and muskets on or get them to do one job, then it'll be a lot simpler. Paul Wade and Paul Williams in Uruguay will be back with you gentlemen and the second half in just a moment. A reminder though, if you'd like to check on any news of the team from Uruguay or in fact the soccer is, you can do so by simply logging on to our website at i7sport.com.au. A break, the second half coming up shortly from Uruguay. Jack has the ball. He makes a pass. Official ball, $140. can stop him. The crowd goes wild. Official team jersey, $65. The goalie comes up, but he beats him. Official soccer boots, $75. kick it in. But wait a sec, he's tripped everyone. Having two chances to score the same goal, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Accepted at sports stores everywhere. all over the world, but I don't understand them here. Like, why leave Australia to play this? Why do they play so much golf? He's up here every night practicing. Why do you want to play here? And tell me again, what do you call your manager? The boss, chief. Governor. Boss. Gaffer. Sir. It's 
Toyota's greatest ever clearance with unbeatable deals across the Toyota range. Right now, it's your greatest ever chance to save on new Toyotas, demonstrators and used cars. Right here, right now. Including run-out deals on single, double and extra cab model Hilux with free air conditioning, saving you over $1,800. It's Toyota's greatest ever clearance. Right here, right now. Saints, they're used to handling critical situations. But can they deal with Cornelia? You thought life on the ward was tough. Well, on my ward, it is. Tonight, 7.30, check your pulse. Whose prognosis is not good? This is no game for the faint-hearted. Okay. The casualties are mounting. Poor Rose is off her medication. It's time to see how deep the jealousy really runs. I've changed my mind. No, no. The All Saints special on The Weakest Link, tonight. Players coming back out onto the pitch in Montevideo for the second half. If you may have just joined us, Uruguay scored once in the first half. They lead 1-0. Would you make any changes, Craig, at halftime? Mark Viduca hasn't had a major influence. We've still got Agostino on the sidelines. No, he's got very little support up there, and we're not getting the midfield up alongside him. Our transition plays too fast. We're not bringing Ocon and Skoko into the game. Perhaps uh, Frank would have mentioned that to the boys at halftime. We need to keep the ball a lot better than what we are doing. But it'll be interesting to see if he does make the change and bring Agostino on last week. He had a massive influence in the second 45 minutes in the home leg. And uh, if he does bring him on, hopefully it'll be the spark to allow us to hold the ball up front a little bit better. So let's see if they can take control in the second half. Back to Paul Wade and Paul Williams. Thanks, Andy. Welcome back, everybody. There's no changes in the... Starting 11 for Australia, though Paul Agostino and Marco Bresciano were the two players at halftime that were warming up while the players were listening to Frank Farina's halftime tour. Farina very much aware of the history of World Cup failures over the years. The last six campaigns since 1974 have ended in disappointment. He's aiming to start a new chapter. Australia still very much well and truly in this game, but they must do more from an attacking sense if they're to recover from the ascendancy that Uruguay has in this game. Well, one pleasing thing would be the fact that this sun is starting to go down ever so slightly, but the the sun i can imagine out there on the faces of the players especially when you're under pressure the way the socceroos have been in this first 45 minutes could be quite telling and as this game goes on and the pace goes out of it a little bit i think the boys will appreciate the cooler conditions let's hope so anyway they really do need to be patient in one area by keeping the ball but be positive in another area by making sure that they go forward with it Well, if it's 1-0 at the end of 90 minutes, we're on for extra time. And maybe Frank Farina wouldn't mind that, given that he does feel very strongly that Australia will have an advantage legs-wise at the end of the game. And has gone out for a goal kick. We're a long way away from that stage, though. There's half a football match to be played before then, and this man has been a real problem for the Australian defence, Dario Silva. Viduka holding the ball up well and getting past one. Still going Viduka. Garcia got a foot in there. Australia have won the ball, but they haven't kept it. It fell off the referee for Viduka of all people. Skoko helping it on. And the back header from Montero. How to get Mark Viduka more involved in the game. May have been one topic of conversation at half time as we see Ruggiero. This pacey player down the left. And what's the referee given there? Well, Liguero saying that there was a bit of contact from Musket. And there was as well. And he's got the free kick. And the referee is very quick to silence any complaints. And Liguero waves the finger at Kevin Musket. Musket on a yellow card, remember. 
Well, any concerns about the referee and how he would handle the situation? Well, so far, he's done a very good job as the free kick comes in. Dario Silva nodding it back to Gigu. That fell nicely for Skoko. That's a very good ball from him to kill. Emerton's breaking free on the right-hand side. Emerton against Montero. Back to Ocon. Space here for Skoko. This is a nice move by Australia. He's got Lazaridis free on the left, but he goes the more direct route for Viduka. Oh, Dario Silva, fast feet there. He lost the ball, but somehow kept possession. Oh, that's a great ball out of the back from Kevin Musket. First time for Kuehl. Well, he's been pulled there, Kuehl. He's been pushed in the back, but he's still got the ball. Ocon takes over. Kuehl onside. Emerton. Kuehl. Now he's offside. The flag's up. Well, the passing start that Australia has made to the second half, Paul, is encouraging. That momentum is such an important thing, and it's very hard to build up when you've had a setback early in a game like Australia had. It's hard, isn't it? Well, you've got to, uh, you know you need another goal, but at the same time, you can't keep possession for, for more than three passes. That was probably the first time in a long time that the Socceroos have kept it moving and kept it to themselves. Musket wins it. Ocon takes over. Kuehl slipped Montero beautifully there. Still going, Kuehl. But Australia get past one defender, and there are two or three others to beat immediately as Uruguay is so difficult to catch unawares at the back as Rakoba almost got past two players. But uh, Pua has often changed his formations, changed his tactics for games. Certainly the local media here were kept guessing on what he would do with today's lineup. He certainly pulled a few surprises as well. Surprises that have so far proved very fruitful for Uruguay as Viduka turns away, kills offside by a mile. Ball ran through to the goalkeeper, so play goes on. And Agostino is warming up along with Marco Bresciano, just alongside him. But now found a way through to Lazaridis, and that's gone out. Interesting that Frank Farina didn't change at halftime straight away, didn't put Harry out on the left hand side. It was a little bit effective in the uh, second half against the Uruguayans at the MCG. He was able to run at them. And Gigu running here at Australia. Free shot! Well, Australia were backpedalling there, and Gigu took full advantage of the space allowed him. No one went to close the ball down. On another day, that could be 2-0. And a player of his calibre will be disappointed that he at least didn't hit the target. That's a quick free kick, Silva. Well, it's an appropriate name for him, isn't it, really? Because he is like Quicksilver. He stayed on side then somehow. Skoko. Beaten in the middle by Garcia, who's looked very much the champion that we heard he was today this is Washington taste with the outside of the boot musket got there first no hesitation from Kevin musket that's the way he's played this World Cup campaign now, there's a free kick there Emerton is saying that Ruggiero fouled him first but Ruggiero got the decision in that particular instance And he can't have too many complaints either. Yeah, I think old Emerton certainly had a point there. He was grabbing the shirt first. Free kick to Uruguay. That's 
a long ball. Kuehl will chase. Two defenders onto one. Made it always difficult for Harry Kuehl, but it's been one well in the air by Viduka. Now Kuehl's in more space. Player free in the centre. Look at the space for Ocon now. He's got a man free on the right-hand side as well. This is Skoko. He's got musket going outside him. Skoko takes the shot. Oh! Well, it touched somewhat on the way through because it's an Australian corner, but probably the best attacking moment of the game for Australia, along with Kuehl's header in the first half. I'm not sure who got a touch, but it is a corner. Well, that will do Australia the world of good just to get a shot on goal as Lazaridis takes it. No one's really at the back post. Moore dropped off well. It's a player offside there, but he's not interfering with play. Moore takes no chances going all the way back to Musket and Schwarzer. Murphy stayed forward and concedes a free kick. Well, Victor Pua has his own sense of history as well because Uruguay won the first ever World Cup played in 1930. They won it, it was played at this ground, the Centenario. They were the home team, obviously, and it was a, just a great day in Uruguay's sporting history. So he knows the traditions and how important football is in this country. As Emerton with a little back heel to cure. Moore first to the ball, and he was fouled there. consistently on top of his man consistently on top of his game Craig Moore again the ball just doesn't quite bounce for Hamilton on that right hand side one goal for the Socceroos though and this match is entirely different Gugu switches. Leguero, what a good addition he's been to this Uruguayan team. There's a foul there in favour of Australia, but play goes on. Kuehl couldn't get to the ball. That's well played by Gigu. And protects it again. Ocon wins it. Frank Farina made the comment yesterday that there has been absolutely unprecedented support from back home in Australia for the squad here in Uruguay. As I mentioned, they've been confined to their hotel, almost like prisoners, really. So the many well wishes from back home have meant a lot to the players. Arigueiro. Dario Silva, well played. Tony Vidmar brings the ball out. Ocon, back to Emerton. As the scoreline remains at 1 0. We'll be in for extra time. Ocon in space. Space for Lazaridis down this left-hand side as well. Chance to run at Washington Tice, and he does so. Gets a very good cross indeed. Kill got a head on it. Well, great work by Lazaridis. He saved Paul. You wanted him more in the game, and that's exactly what we're looking for from him, really. Absolutely. Look, Tais should have his ears pinned back. He should be standing on the edge of his own 18-yard box. The only way he's going to do that if, is if Stan actually forces him to do it. And there's a perfect example. He did it once in the first half, and he's done it once in the second, and they've been both great results. Skoko. 
Wants to help it on to Lazaridis, but there's not a great option that way, and he just keeps it. And he wins the free kick. There's a lot of pressure on the ball. It is very hard to keep possession in the centre of the park there. And Gigu just fouling Skoko. Lazaridis again. This time he's thinking about coming inside, but he goes outside again. That's a deflected cross. Garcia with the clearance, and that will go out. Leave it for me, says the captain. Ocon takes the ball as Garcia tries to get his own defence organised. Uruguay have just lost a little bit of their domination of this game. Probably been the most even phase of the match, which is promising for Australia as Ocon launches a long throw, aiming for the big man. It's flicked on by Murphy. And Carini with the quick clearance for Dario Silva, who's all alone up front. And he still keeps the ball well. Emerton now. That's better from Emerton running at the defence. Kuhl with a little chip to Skoko. Skoko takes the shot, came off. Lembo, it's a little bit ragged at the back for Uruguay at the moment. Well, that came off a Uruguayan. And that will be an Australian corner. The heads are up a little bit more, Paul. There's they are. just a, a better feel about it from an Australian perspective. Yeah, and the heads might be going down with the blue shirts as well. I haven't seen Cordova in this second half at all. His socks are halfway down, his shins which in the game of football suggests that you are getting tired. So maybe that's a good sign for the Socceroos. Well, there's a bit going on at the back post as Australia come in and Moore and Murphy were there. It's Uruguay 1, Australia 0. Where's home to Australia's largest car exporter? And the 20,000 people who contribute to every Toyota built in Australia? It's Victoria, of course. The home of Toyota. This is Aguero once again. Hard to explain why Aguero wasn't in the team. Well, Kevin Musket's going to have to watch himself. That's another foul on Ruggiero. He may be in line for a card for persistent fouling. I don't know how many more he's got left, Paul, but it can't be many. One, two at the most, I'd say. He's never had a red card. Let's hope he doesn't get one in this game. So that must be vigilant at the back, and that's an unusual free kick to Gigu, and that's well over the bar. Is he the man for the job for Australia, as he was in Melbourne? Aga, as he's known to his teammates, Paul Agostino, made a huge impact at half-time as he came on as a substitute. That suggests that Harry Kuhl might move out to the left-hand side. And Agostino will partner Mark Viduca up front, which means that, unfortunately, Stan Lazaridis is going to have to make way for him. And whether that changes, I guess only time will tell. But that's that's been the uh, pattern of Frank Farina's play in the uh, last two games, at least. Yeah, I think while the scoreline remains at 1-0, I don't think Farina's going to do anything drastic. He's not going to throw three up front or anything like that. He's got Kuehl up front here, and that's a good ball in! Not an easy one at all for the Duca. But the signs are there for Australia. And it was just driven across by Harry Kuehl. It was behind the Duca. Nothing at all he could do with that one. And 
more cause for optimism. There's Tony Vidmar. You can sense the murmurings around the centenario. There's a Reedies, rather. Oh, that was hit a hand. Oh, and Kuehl lashed it over the bar. Well, it fell so nicely for him. I thought it hit a Uruguayan hand on the way up. But perhaps it was Kuehl's hand, it was. G's come close, hasn't he, from oh. the free kick in the first. And have a look at that. Maybe a foot in it. Well, I don't think the referee... The, in fact, the referee didn't give that as handball. That would have counted. Oh, the bench of Australia. Well, the bench could be up again as Everton chases. Well, there are fans up on their feet here, screaming to get the substitutes on. And uh, whether Pua will actually make a substitute based on what the fans are saying, I'm not quite sure, but they are starting to get on the back of the Uruguayans here. And Australia knock on the door very loudly indeed. Viduka again frustrated with a header that he just couldn't quite direct on goal. A long throw caused problems. Murphy caused problems. Viduka with a split second to react. Three defenders went to Murphy. Just the one on Viduka. Nicely for Silver, danger here for Australia. Rogero, that's a wild shot. But the shooting has been quite abysmal at times. They've got one on goal, which is what matters, but there's been some shockers. Well, maybe that's why they've only scored 19 goals before, before they came into the qualifiers against the Socceroos. And Argentina, who finished top of the group, scored 42. So they were a long way behind the pack. There's a change coming up for uh, Uruguay. It's uh, Richard Morales coming on. He is a big man. And we'll just wait to see what the change will be. Haven't seen Vakova for the entire second half. But they'll uh, keep him on. Magallanes to come off. It's still Uruguay 1, Australia 0. be the new commentary team captain when Richie retires. Does Tone deserve to wear the bone? Has Bill earned the right to wear the white? All will be revealed on the 12th man's brand new album, The Final Dig, out Monday. So it's a giant of a player in Richard Morales and a real midget, if you like, in Dario Silva, the two front men for Uruguay. Here's Morales now, putting his weight around already. He wins one in the air. Ocon just crowded out in midfield. That right, play goes on. The whistle hasn't gone. It's a loose ball. Well, let's give it away in a dangerous situation now. The whistle's gone. Well, what's going on here? The referee's going to get a card out. And there is an emphatic yellow there for Pablo Garcia. I think the referee saw something after the ball had gone. But the statement in the body language said it all from Ali Boussaim, the United Arab Emirates referee. Let's see what happened here. Well, I must say I'm none the wiser. Cool! Well, he flicked it on the turn on the volley. Just threw out an ankle and... Hope to make some kind of connection, which he did. Well, you know the Uruguayans are in a little bit of trouble when their centre forward wins a ball on the halfway line with his head and they all cheer. He's won it again. Australia's half so far, no doubt about that. We're 22 minutes in. Duca will challenge this one. That's well won in the air, but Ocon takes over. Hamilton brings it down on the chest. Again, he's closed down so quickly. Found some space for himself. Great run by Hamilton. 
What a tough time he's had. And there's a free kick going to be given here. It's going Australia's way. All of a sudden, some decisions are going their way. The loose balls are falling to green shirts, whereas they always went to blue shirts in the first half. And it was uh, Ruggiero tugging on the shirt there. A great ball. Emerton wins it back for Australia. Ocon. That's calm play by him. Vidmar bringing Lazaridis in early. Fuels down the line. Oh, Lembo didn't know where the ball was. And Fuels got the better of him. Into the area. That's a corner. Well, he is the joker in the Australian pack. The first goal, or the only goal really, in Melbourne was created by a bit of genius from Harry Kuehl to win a ball he had no right to win. Crossed it for Agostino. He went down. Australia got the penalty. It's a corner here. And Moore's underneath it. Murphy at the back post again, the two big men. Ocon wins it in midfield. Oh, look at the space for Vidmar. Oh, look at the U grinds here. They've got three forward. Just one back. It's Kevin Musket. It's Rakoba. Moore coming back quickly, and he closes him down well. And you can understand why a free kick was given away because Australia were very short in numbers then. Well, Emerton it was recovering. Rakoba, the danger man, the crowd was sensing something special. There was Moore and Musket, the only two back. It's Taylor made for Alvaro Rakoba. We haven't seen him for 24 and a half minutes of the second half. He's barely had a touch. That in itself is a worrying thing for Australia. Expectation from the crowd. Rakoba over the wall. Oh, it's a goal! the man is doing a lap of the entire pitch spurred on by 65,000 screaming Uruguayan fans Rukoba does it again Agostino gets his gear off Australia still need just the one goal and they are in the driver's seat. It's easier said than done as Morales gets a yellow for the celebrations. The big man was hard to stop in the area and that's a great touch by him. It's a priceless free kick, isn't it? Hardly sighted for long periods in this second half. He's got curve, it's got dip. All it needed was a touch and that's all it took for Gonzalez and he took off round the ground. But now with, uh, with a change imminent, I think you just might see Harry step out wide and get some crosses in for the likes of Agostino and Mark Viduca to head in the back of that because they have certainly had their chances in this second half and they will get more before the end of 90 minutes. Long ball in, Viduca not watching. Lazaridis touching it on, Viduca touched straight to the goalkeeper. Well, all of a sudden now the clock takes on even greater importance and we know for sure that the contest will be decided at the end of 90 minutes now the centenario is bouncing up and down everyone on their feet jumping on the spot the foundations tested but they have seen these scenes many many times before Farina's on the edge of the area talking to Lazaridis so Agostino's going to come on Uruguay 2 Australia 0 health cover that works to keep you out of hospital 
Australian Unity Well Plan offers prevention, not just cure. So, who's looking after you? So Kevin Musket has made way for Paul Agostino. The Lazaridis retains his spot on the left. Tony Vidmar has switched over to the right. Kuehl drops into the left midfield position. Agostino and Viduka up front. All is not lost, but time is running out for Australia. Well, I always think in situations like this, you are going to get one chance. You maybe get two. It's just a matter of whether you can take it. Change for Uruguay. And uh, maybe Del Santos is coming on. Left out of the side about two hours before kickoff because he wanted to go forward more. He's a defensive minded player, and Del Santos comes on for Rubiero, who's really impressed. What a fine match he's had. And Del Santos' height crucial at set pieces. The goalkeepers missed this one, but so did everybody else. Back. Murphy picks up the big man Morales. He's towering above Sean Murphy, who is probably the biggest player in the Australian team, along with Viduka. There is Rakoba. Has he found a second win? Rakoba. Rakoba. Great ball. Big chance for Uruguay. Pablo Garcia could have sealed his country's place in the World Cup finals there. But it slid past the post. And Australia are still alive, barely here. Rakova involved, that did not miss by much. Well, can Agostino make the impact that he made? Given it to Uruguay. Richard Morales. This is his home ground. He plays for one of the big clubs in Uruguay in Nacional. And that stayed in somehow. Uruguay know that they've got one foot in the World Cup draw in five days' time. Well, we thought we had one foot in the World Cup draw four years ago. Maybe we're going to do it in the same dramatic fashion that Iran did it. 2 0, it's an interesting scoreline. You can always dream, can't you? That well, Silva, but he can't quite keep the ball in. Well, John Ellis is warming up as well now for Australia as Frank Farina very shortly will have to roll the final dice and throw players forward without any caution whatsoever. Ellis is perhaps the man to come on to take the two three up front. Right. Ocon will take it. Murphy the target. Plenty of blue shirts back. Skoko will take the shot and hit his own player. As a readies wins it back. Tony Vidmar calmly just plays it out wide to Skoko. Good ball. Kewell gets past one into the area. So much cover at the back for Uruguay. They've got numbers there that makes it very difficult to break down. A 
Agostino adding uh, an extra aerial threat for Australia from set pieces. Oh, touched someone there. Moore hits it! Great volley. Struck it very well indeed. Ocon, if the ball can be kept in. It's a good near post ball. It's another corner. Australia keeping the pressure on the home team. Well, he's like a magnet, isn't he? Craig Moore, the number of headers he's had in this contest, he's hit the bar, he's scored a goal against France, he really is enjoying himself at set pieces. Australia trying to find a ball because he went into the crowd and it wasn't returned. And there's a couple bobbing up from around the ground. Every Uruguayan player is in his own penalty area. Well, one, oh, he's tipped it over the bar. Carini. Well, that was a top save. So similar to the one we saw in Melbourne. Murphy again, the man from set pieces. Oh, a metre either side of the goalkeeper would have been in the back of the net. Kuehl comes across to take it from this near side. And they'll be looking into the sun as well, so it's not a good place for goalkeepers to be coming out of their goal. Is there something here for Australia? More blocked with the run. Here's Carini again, he's dropped it. It's bouncing around, and this time it's easily grabbed by the young goalkeeper. And Morales is the only player forward. We've got Lazarides underneath it, he hesitated there, Lazarides. Morales wins it. And he goes down, but there's no free kick given. Well, Santos, Morales, this is Gigu. Mario Silva. Looks like he could play two or three games, let alone not being able to last one. Kuehl lost it for a second, then won it back and won the free kick. A yellow card for Della Santos for kicking the ball away, but they really need goals, not cards for the opposition. about to take place with John Aloisi coming on for Sean Murphy Australia are going very thin at the back indeed with Musket off and Murphy off and Aloisi and Agostino on oh, Ocon gets the ball Skoko Azaridis and Vidmar the two defenders Dropped well there. Della Santos just hacks it clear. Meanwhile, Uruguay want to make a change. Uruguay to Australia nil. Mario Silva getting the yellow card for complaining. <laughs> Joe Bizzero is coming on. He's an out and out central defender. So Australia are replacing defenders. Uruguay are bringing them on. They've decided to hang on to what they've got, Paul. You can hardly blame them. No, it uh, just needs uh, a little bit of luck now, I think. It has to drop on the right head. Is it Australia's turn for an ounce of luck? As Lazaridis goes forward, he'll get there. But so will the defender. Oh, that's nicely done by Gigu. Which way will the decision go? It's Australia's. Player is nowhere near 
the required distance. Neither of the two in the wall are. Well, it's nerve-wracking stuff. The substitutes next to Harry Kuehl are encouraging him to take the free kick. That's an easy one for the defence, though. There's no one forward for Uruguay. No one's even thinking of going forward. It's a run here by Rakoba. He has got his sights on goal. He'll have to go all the way on his own. Moore and Vidmar covered it, and they win a free kick. Is there time for an Aussie goal? Without a doubt. Where is it going to come from? Is the question. Now this is the Uruguayan goal. It was flicked on by Morales at the front post, and Schwarzer was unable to keep it out. And he began the biggest lap of honour I've ever seen in football. A yellow card for his celebrations, but he didn't really care. And a third goal to Uruguay would well and truly put their place in the World Cup finals. Ocon, the Lazaridis. Agostino would chase anything at this stage, but he had no chance of reaching that one. They've only scored more than once on four occasions in their 18 World Cup qualifiers, Uruguay. They found two important ones today, though. Lazaridis helps it on. Away by Garcia. Here's Rakoba trying a little touch. There's barely anyone forward for Uruguay. So when Australia do manage to get the ball into Uruguay's half, there is no room at all to operate as the referee glances at his watch again. Ocon went long and switched it to Vidmar. Players free at the back post. Skoko trying to thread it through. Handball. take the free kick a long way out of his area. It's desperate stuff now for the Socceroos. And they are still in the World Cup, but they're clinging them by their fingernails. And there's another foul. This time on Gigu. The ball at the wrong end of the ground from an Australian perspective. And Gigu being told to get up quickly by the referee. Victor Pua will be a national hero if he can pull off this result. Uruguay, no hurry to take the free kick, no doubt about that. <laughs> Uruguay, Uruguay is the cry around the ground. Rakova just taking his time trying to hold play up. Skips past one. Kuehl was waiting for that and got the ball off him. Harry Kuehl now charging through. Still going kill. De Los Santos trying to cut him down. He's got a lot to do. He's got three players around him. He's got the cross in, though, Kill. That's a loose ball, the overhead, and that's an easy one for Carini. And around three and a half minutes remaining here. What a difficult situation it is for the likes of Aloisi and Agostino to come on. It takes time to play your way into a game and settle into a match, but there's no time for that. No, not at all. They've just got to plant themselves in the middle of the 18-yard box. Don't go looking for it from Harry Kuehl. Just get in there and let him do it, as he's going to do now. Oh, well, he's got a cross in! Oh, my word, how close was that? Aloisi on the lunge. Well, the referee's blown his whistle. 
I think the free kick is against John Aloisi, but how brilliant was Kuhl to get that cross in. There was no space at all to get the ball in. That's just the sort of magic needed for Australia. It's a free kick to Uruguay. Well, we were saying there might be one chance between now and the end of the game, possibly two. I wonder if that's it. Waduka. Kewell. Space on the right. Look at the space for Ocon. Kewell plays it early. No one's going wide for Ocon, so he comes inside. Kewell now in some space on the left. Della Santos just hurls Ocon out the way. Kewell prepared to take responsibility himself and run at the defence. Emma Turn still working overtime. Uruguay, hack it clear. Schwartzer will come together, does he? He's taking his time, but he gets there. Well, <laughs> the crowd are up because Morales has gone down, but play's carrying on. And the decision is a goal kick. He's done a good job, uh, this referee. This is what happened here with Morales. Schwarzer, and he went... Well, the referees... Australia, lucky that he didn't see that. Although it was harmless. It could have turned out worse for the Socceroos. Oh, that's a lovely touch on. Rakoba's going through. Rakoba, a third now, and it's all over for Australia. Morales. And that's it. qualify for the 2002 World Cup at the expense of Australia and the tiny nation goes absolutely wild Rakoba has done nothing all the second half except one bit of genius here as he poked it through the legs he picked up Morales who's come on as sub and scored two. And he kept the cool head in a real white-hot atmosphere, and that's a very well-taken goal. And that is more heartache for Australia. Well, that's a difference, isn't it? Rakova, tired as you could be, but sets up the third goal. I just wonder what would have happened if Harry Kuehl's cross had been met at the other end. And that says it all. The hanging head of Frank Farina. It's all over. Four years, hard work. Well, we've had a minute of time added on, and this place is going to go absolutely crazy any second now as the fourth official holds up the board to just let us know a little bit hard to see in the sun how many minutes are left but it doesn't matter really there's a yellow card for Carini that doesn't matter either oh Frank Farina is devastated blow the whistle and put the Australian team and the Australian nation out of their misery. That's what it means to qualify. There'll be tears of joy and tears of sheer dismay, I'm sure. We're in the final seconds now, Washington Tays going into the corner. It'll be a Uruguayan free kick. It doesn't matter. Well, 
look at the face on the man. They can all empathise with how he's feeling as the free kick comes in and Schwartz have got a touch on that. It'll be a Uruguayan corner. Farina said at the start of his reign that he would be judged on one thing and one thing only and that was success or failure to qualify for the World Cup. Morales, the man who has really hurt the Socceroos. Rukoba, how did he get it through Tony Vidmar and past Lazaridis? It doesn't matter because Morales finished it off. Aloisi's through here. Kuehl. Viduka. Nothing coming off for Australia now. There will be no problems with crowd riots after this game. Only riotous celebrations throughout Montevideo. Lazaridis. Referee with another look at his watch. Dario Silva's played a big part today for Uruguay. De Los Santos left out, but came on as a sub to play a cameo role as well. And this is the man, Morales. Victor Pua is right on the edge of the technical area, still giving instructions to Rikoba, but it's unnecessary. Oh, Washington Tays, he was tugged back. It's another free kick. Well, the hurt that the Australian team are feeling is indescribable. I'm sure you're all experiencing it at home as we are here, Paul. Koba over the ball. Can he really finish us off? Well, Schwarzer took it well. Well, another stake has been hammered through the heart of Australian soccer. And there's that familiar, sickly feeling of really deep hurt that only comes when you're desperately close to success as the Socceroos were here today. Even when they were 2-0 down, there was a sense of possibility that the one solitary goal needed could be found from somewhere, but that wasn't the case. And Australia trudge off the centenario with incredible disappointment. Richard Morales came on as a substitute for Uruguay and found the back of the net twice in the second half. Well, words escape me at this moment, lady, because we both know how much this meant for Australian soccer. The final score in the centenario, Uruguay qualify for the World Cup. Uruguay 3, 